Our Law and Justice segment tonight. A New York City police officer was assassinated yesterday while sitting inside her police car. Maya Sotis Familia, a 48-year-old mother of three, was shot in the head at point-blank range by Alexander Bonds. According to Bonds' girlfriend, he held a long-standing grudge against the police. So where's the outrage from the Black Lives Matter movement over this execution of a black woman? With me now from Americans in support of law enforcement, Scott Erickson. Scott, good to see you. Liz, good to be with you. Scott, this is such a heartbreaking story. I mean, Officer Familia, she was 48 years old, the mother of three. She has a daughter in college and is mother to twins as well. She served with the New York City Police Department for 12 years. Only recently, within the last 18 months, I believe, was serving in the most dangerous street in the Bronx. Uh, two nights ago, she was un in an unprovoked attack, the commissioner says, uh, was shot in the head. And that's exactly where I want your opinion on this. I don't understand why the police commissioner said that this attack was unprovoked. Clearly, Bonds, the shooter, uh, had very anti-police animosity. Well, sure. I mean, this was an absolute tragedy, what happened uh, to Officer Familia. And unfortunately, it's not as rare as we would like them to be. Obviously, we, we would hope that something like this never happens, but unfortunately, it does happen on occasion. With respect to what provoked uh, this individual to engage in this sort of uh, this sort of behavior, I don't know. You know, we, there's no justification. So even though in his mind he might have felt justification, clearly there is no justification. So in that sense, it's certainly not provoked by any any sort of rational thinking. No, not provoked in the sense that there wasn't an altercation, there wasn't a prior interaction between the two of them. I guess uh, the police department is saying that they don't think that Bonds had ever even met Officer Familia. He just targeted her because of her blue uniform. But this guy apparently was yeah. uh, diagnosed schizophrenic, but he'd also posted on Facebook before saying if he ever met a police officer, and this is a quote from him, we're gonna shake. I mean, he obviously had those intentions to target police in his mind. Yeah, I mean, Clearly there were signs there that people around him, close to him, could have seen that, that he was unstable. And I think his girlfriend called 911 only a few hours before he actually murdered the officer. So people need to realize when they see people around them that they're, they're close to, that, they're, that are acting in ways that are sort of unstable and, and, and bordering on violent, they, they should take appropriate measures and make sure that they call the authorities. So otherwise they should try and take steps to help that person seek some sort of, uh, so they can have a better understanding of what that person is going through to see why they're kind of going down this path of, of, uh, of anger and violence. Right, and clearly get them the medical attention that Alexander Bonds uh, needed, clearly needed here. Let's talk about how many officers, though, are killed, because we've seen this increase in violence against police officers so far in 2017, and we're halfway through the year. There have been 68 officers that have been killed in the line of duty. And I want to go back uh, even a year further. In 2016, there were 145 officers killed in the line of duty. Scott, 21 of those 145 were killed ambush style like Officer Familia. This is not an isolated incident. This happens almost on a regular basis to our police. Yeah, and Liz, I'm sorry, your question kind of cut out. I know you mentioned that there were 68 officers killed in the line of duty this year, and you mentioned 21. I'm sorry that part of the question cut out. Right, and I, and I said last year in 2016, there were 145 officers killed on the line of duty across our nation. 21 of those 145 were killed ambush style, like Officer Familia. Yeah. This is not an isolated incident. This is something that happens almost on a regular basis to officers. Yeah, unfortunately, over the past few years, it seems to be much more regular than it used to be. Uh, in fact, this year, we've seen 25 officers killed by gunfire, which is a 25% increase uh, over last year at this same time. So the violence against law enforcement has not abated, even though I think sort of from a macro level sense, the tone and rhetoric about law enforcement has improved. Certainly with the election of, of President Trump, we've seen a, an improvement in, in the rhetoric, at least emanating from the top of government on down in support of law enforcement. But still, law enforcement, enforcement officers are dealing with a tremendous amount of violence in society and that has not yet subsided. Right, and it seems to me that there's some hypocrisy here too because when a black man, anyone who is non-white, is killed, even if it's justifiable by a police officer, we see riots in the street, we see mobs of people, we see anti-cop violence. Everyone in our country knows the name of the individual who was killed. Like I said, whether it was justifiable or not, this was a clear assassination and execution of a black woman because she wore that blue uniform. The Black Lives Matter movement 
they're not saying anything. They're silent on this. And to me, that the hypocrisy is not only uh, tragic intellectually, this woman's lost her life protecting our community, and they don't even bother to speak up. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime people, you know, rush to judgment based on superficial characteristics, that either the race of an individual or what have you, um, it, it's it's always to the detriment of society. We need to we need to look at everything holistically, look at every incident for what it is individually. And in this case, like you said, the individual, the officer in New York was targeted simply because she was wearing a blue uniform. We need to all recognize that this was a targeted, prejudicial attack with no rational basis behind it, and that is really a tragedy for all of us. It is, it is, and it's certainly a tragedy for her family. Our thoughts and prayers are with Officer Familia's family, her children in this tragic time, and her brothers and sisters in arms on the NYPD.